Hi everybody, Professor Gassimi here, and in this component of the lecture, we will be discussing metadata in HTML. Once again, I do encourage you to take a look at the associated readings here, which uh, not only has a written version of the content, but also uh, has some exercises for you to go through. So let's start off this lecture by revisiting a very basic bare bones HTML document. Okay, that's what I'm showing there in the box on the right hand side. And this HTML document always contains roughly the same structure, at least in its skeleton form. There's always this uh, doc type HTML empty tag that specifies that the rest of the content we're going to see is HTML. Then we always have an HTML tag that encapsulates some content. And the first thing I want to point out here is that this HTML tag actually has an attribute called lang that you can specify that says what's the language of the content you're about to display in the rest of the page. In this case, it's American English. This language tag is not required. You don't have to do it. Your HTML will display with or without it. But when you're going to deploy your web application, I strongly encourage you to actually include this because it allows search engines to more effectively index your content and could therefore bump you up higher in search results. OK, but within this HTML document, there's two components we mentioned, right? There's the head. That's all the things that uh, are metadata about the document, things that are important but that you don't see. And then there's the body. Well, this lecture is all about the head, what goes in the head and why is it there. Some of the components of what go in the head we've already discussed, like the title, right? The title is what shows up in the web browser tag for this page, as well as um, if you try to bookmark the page, the, uh, the content that you see here in the middle is what would be put as the recommended name of the bookmark. OK, but there's also this meta tag. And what we're, you're going to see is that this meta tag is actually a pretty versatile little tag that accomplishes a whole lot of things um, for a whole lot of functional reasons. One example that I'm showing here in this very simple skeleton is specifying the character set or character encoding of the particular page, in this case, UTF-8, which is, by the way, what I strongly recommend you do for your own pages. So let's talk a little bit more about this meta element. Um, Meta elements not always, but oftentimes, can include a name and content attributes. And these sort of act kind of like a key value pair. So it's a little different from what you see in the case of the character set, where the key is, is the attribute itself, and then the value is what shows up in the quotes. Meta elements can sometimes instead have something called name content, where you kind of separate out the key and the value for uh, processing purposes. This is the case for the description, the keyword, and the author metadata attributes that uh, correspondingly provide the uh, description of your website, some important keywords for them, and who the author of the page was. These attributes, again, are not important from a content perspective, but they are important if you want to do a, uh, a search as a search engine. Search engines will oftentimes take this metadata and use it to decide what to return or where you stand in the in the hierarchy of search page results based on how well you specified this metadata. Okay, so there are some attributes of meta that have this name content relationship, but there are others that don't, right? We saw this character set. And one of the other examples is the HTTP equiv attribute, which can help you specify, among other things, um, the refresh rate of your page. So how often do you want uh, your web server to send an update of content if, if that is at all relevant. In this case, we want to refresh the page every 30 seconds. Now, when we're speaking about metadata, it's important to note that um, because it's this kind of versatile uh, backbone that's used for a whole lot of other purposes not related to the content, there are some metadata attributes that are used by very specific services, such as social media, to exchange information or synthesize information that exists within a page. What I'm showing you here is some meta tags, right? And you might notice that um, there's an attribute, property, and then content. That's different than name and content like we saw before, OK? This property content is following the open graph data metadata protocol that was uh, that's used by Facebook. I think it was created by Facebook as well. And it's used to basically generate those nifty cards that are automatically generated when you post a link in your Facebook feed. Basically, the way to read this is you have these three tags, right? The first one says, 
here's the uh, the image that I want, and it gives that I want to show up when I paste the link, and it, it gives the content location. The second one says, here's the description that I want you to post, the Mozilla Developer Network, yada, 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 which shows up down here. The image is here. The content is here. And then third one is, what's the title I want? That's this block here, Mozilla Developer Network, right? Um, and you give it this title. So there's different protocols. Facebook has one. Twitter has one. And if you want to make it so that when people post a link to your web page, you get a beautiful card like this, there's ways to control that by um, uh, editing the metadata within your head. One of the things that I think is uh, really, uh, I think it's a fun property actually of metadata is the ability to add custom icons for your site. So that's in the case of Google, right? You get the the circle with the, the color G. And in the case of my website, you get this little um, uh, scientific beaker filled with some liquid. OK, um, these little icons, by the way, that show up in your browser tab are called favicons, which is short for favorite icons, because they also um, are used to display an icon in the favorites or bookmark list of your browser. And the way that you can include them is by including a link in your head. You specify that it's an icon, and you give the location of, of the icon. In a typically .ico format, you can use others. Um, most browsers will handle things that are not ICO format, but there are some older ones that don't. So best practice is to save things in ICO format. And if you actually include this in your uh, metadata or your head, you will get, when people visit your web page, uh, an icon that shows up there. Also, what goes in the head are the necessary pieces to apply CSS and JavaScript to your HTML documents. Now, I know we haven't spoken about CSS and JavaScript yet, but we will before very long. And at that time, um, you're going to see these two um, items show up in the head of your document. The first one is a link element. This link element tells you, um, first, you have to say, you know, what kind of a link is it? In this case, it's a style sheet. And then you'd point to a CSS file. And this sort of imports all the style information uh, into that uh, uh, HTML document for the purposes of, of creating the stylistic elements of the display. And the second one is a script tag, which has a source element that points to the file. And um, there's also this uh, binary attribute defer, which basically instructs the browser how to load the JavaScript. In this case, defer means load the JavaScript after the page has finished parsing the HTML. I, I strongly encourage you in most cases to actually include this defer. Uh, when you're when you're working on JavaScript later, because if the JavaScript loads before the HTML does, you can get this really odd behavior where your script is completely and perfectly correct, but your code breaks and you're you, you're super confused trying to figure out why things aren't working. So this is an example of how to import CSS, and this is an example of how to import JavaScript in the head. So what did I want you to take away from this? Well, the first one is that the head is uh, the part that's not displayed in the web browser when the when the page is loaded. So it's the invisible content that has important effects on your uh, page's content. The official way of adding metadata to a document is through the meta element, although there are uh, other tags as well. We saw link as an example, title as an example. Some metadata is designed to provide specific services. For example, we saw um, that Facebook has uh, the open graph metadata protocol that you can use to, to create those, those beautiful little blocks when you post a link into Facebook or LinkedIn or somewhere else. Uh, you can add references to custom icons in your metadata, and you can uh, have instructions to import CSS and JavaScript within your metadata.